Christ humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name. Er erniedrigte sich selbst und ward gehorsam bis zum Tode, ja zum Tode am Kreuz. Darum hat ihn auch Gott erhöht und hat ihm den Namen gegeben, der über alle Namen ist. Greetings from Christ Evangelical Lutheran Church here in Kelowna, British Columbia on this Palm Passion Sunday 2021. Schöne Grüße aus der Evangelische Lutherische Christusgemeinde Kelowna, British Columbia an diesem Palm Passion Sonntag 2021. Jesus kommt triumphal in Jerusalem hinein mit schreienden Menschen und schwenkenden Palmen nur am Ende der Woche gebrochen, verurteilt und verspottet zu sein. Jesus enters Jerusalem in triumph, praised by shouts and waving palms, a veritable demonstration in the face of the authorities, only to be reduced to a common criminal by the end of the week, jeered and ridiculed by people and soldiers alike. Today's service invites us to enter into that drama and to prepare ourselves for the highest, holiest, most somber week in the Christian calendar. Each and every day of that week, Jesus takes closer and closer steps to the cross. Easter is peaking on the horizon, but it is so much more meaningful when we walk with Jesus to the cross first. Our service today is prepared for us by our Bishop, the Reverend Dr. Gregory Moore, and our assistant to the Bishop, the Reverend Kathy Martin, for which we give thanks. For Holy Week, you will find services on our web website or YouTube channel, as usual. As well, we encourage you to visit the BC Synod website to find opportunities to join other Lutheran congregations in their services. And of course, you are also welcome to go back and watch last year's online Holy Week offerings once again, when we were early in our journey of doing all this virtually as well as in person. A local note, if you were not able to pick up your palms yesterday on Saturday, they are still available to be picked up from the church from Tuesday afterwards. Just ring the bell and someone will come and assist you. Für der kommenden Woche, Sie werden wie üblich unsere uh, Gottesdienste, der Karfreitag Gottesdienst, am Website finden. Sie können auch gehen und die Gottesdienste von der Letz vom letzten Jahr auch anschauen, als Erinnerung. Wenn Sie am Samstag nicht vorbeikommen äh, gekommen sind, um Ihre Palmen abzuholen, können Sie während dieser kommenden Woche ab Dienstag beim Büro vorbeikommen und Palmen bekommen. Wir machen Pause und wir vorbereiten uns für den Gottesdienst und für diese heilige Woche, die vor uns liegt. We now pause and prepare for our worship as we prepare ourselves for the Holy Week that lies before us. Welcome. Thank you for joining us for our Palm Passion Sunday worship. I'm Pastor Kathy Martin, and I serve as the assistant to the bishop here in our BC Synod for mission renewal and congregational support. Here with me also is Bishop Greg Moore, He's our preacher for today's service. We are grateful for the use of Mount Zion Lutheran Church here in New Westminster, where we are recording our worship today. We acknowledge that we gather on the traditional, ancestral, unceded territories of the Kikite First Nation of the Coast Salish peoples. We invite you to take a moment to offer your own acknowledgement 
for the land where you worship, live, play, and work. We are also grateful for the musical gifts shared with us today. The names of those playing and singing are listed in the worship folder and at the end of this recording. The Holy Spirit calls us together as the people of God. We begin in Christ's name. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this, the Lord needs it, and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. If you have palms or branches with you right now, if you would uh, please hold them up for a blessing. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. We praise you, O God, for redeeming the world through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Today he entered the holy city in triumph and was proclaimed Messiah and King by those who spread garments and branches along his way. Bless these branches and those who carry them. Grant us grace to follow our Lord in the way of the cross, so that joined to his death and resurrection, we enter into life with you, through the same Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us go forth in peace, in the name of Christ. Amen. If you have palm fronds, I invite you to, to wave them as we sing hymn number three four four all glory laud and honor and feel free to march around in your home in this celebration blessed is the one who comes in the name of the lord hosanna in the highest blessed is the one who comes in the name of the lord hosanna in the highest Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. 
Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. As we now enter into the contemplation of the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ and meditate on the salvation of the world through his sufferings, death, burial, and resurrection, let us pray. Everlasting God, in your endless love for the human race, you sent our Lord Jesus Christ to take on our nature and to suffer death on the cross. In your mercy, enable us to share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
A reading from Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning the Lord God wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious, I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. And a reading from Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, although being in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but relinquished it all, taking the form of a slave being born in human likeness and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival, he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, crucify him. Pilate asked them, why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole cohort, and they clothed him in a purple cloak, 
and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. And they began saluting him, Hail, King of the Jews! They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lemme sabachthani, which means, my God, my God. Why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, Listen, he's calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, truly this man was God's son. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, and Mary, the mother of James the Younger and of Josie, and Salome. These used to follow him and provided for him when he was in Galilee. And there are many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When evening had come, and since it was the day of preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate wondered if he were already dead, and summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he had been dead for some time. When he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Then Joseph bought a linen cloth and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Josie, saw where the body was laid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, o Christ. o Christ.
it is difficult for us as pastors to go and stand behind the pulpit on Palm Sunday or on Good Friday and preach. Because when we as pastors stand here on those two days in particular, we must talk about Jesus' death. And it's hard to know what all to say about that and what it means. It's hard talking about death. But when we talk about Jesus' death, at some point, we also must talk about, or at least acknowledge, our own death as well, and the death of our loved ones. In our work as pastors, we see enough death and sorrow. We see people in hospital rooms as they slowly draw their last breaths. We see death in the faces of those left behind as they mourn the loss of their loved ones. We see death take away relationships, friends, family, future. I doubt that I'm alone in this sentiment about the challenge of preaching on Palm Sunday and Good Friday. I'm guessing a lot of us pastors would much rather begin a sermon with a very different story. After all, the last time the church gathered for a vital time of celebration and reflection, a dramatically different biblical story was read that night. And it went like this. In that region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And the angel said to them, be not afraid. For behold, I bring you good news of great joy. You see, now that's a story I can preach about. My guess is that it's probably much easier for you to attend church at Christmas, isn't it? I'm sure you find it much harder to attend church even online on a day like today or to log in again on Good Friday. No presents to look forward to on a day like today. There's no tree to decorate, no lights to put up, no cards to send. There's just a story about death. For generation after generation, the church has proclaimed, Christ died for you. What do you say? in response to someone who has died for you? What do you do in response to this self-giving love? We hear about such things during times of war, for instance, where someone jumps on a grenade and sacrifices their life to save others. We hear stories of people caught in freezing water and where someone hands the, the helicopter's life-saving rope to another person. And by the time the helicopter returns, that person is nowhere to be seen. We hear stories like that. The church proclaims that 20 centuries ago, someone died for us. Someone laid down their life for us with a self-giving love. For us, yes, but not just for us. For this world, for all of creation. See, we tend to focus on the words for us. We tend to think of how wonderfully superior we human beings are, how special we are. We're so very anthropocentric, thinking that it's all about us. But what do we read in John 3.16? For God so loved the world. The world. All of it, not just us humans cosmos, the world. And we see that this self-giving love is not just for us, but is for the world. God so loved the world. Jesus gave his life for the world. As Paul writes in Romans 8, we know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves. And note how Paul speaks about creation first, and then the humans. Jesus' love, his care, his justice, his resurrection is for this world that God loves. 
that God created, that God cares for, that God gifts. Jesus' self-giving love for the world shatters all that binds us, all that destroys us. His life and death challenge us to a different life, a different way, a way of self-sacrifice, a way of loving, of being, a justice-seeking way, a journey of reconciliation in all our relations with one another and with creation. God in flesh, we say. God coming to us, loving us, to overthrow all that binds us, controls us, that breaks us, that shatters our lives. Jesus, the great liberator, so loves the world. Even in all of its brokenness, its racism, its pride and prejudice and privilege, the environmental degradation, the sexism and homophobia, the judgmentalism and selfishness, the powers and principalities that need to be overturned, God comes to us and to our world and loves us to death. A moment ago, I made reference to Christmas. But think about that story for a moment. Think of the story where the angel declares to Mary that she is going to give birth to Jesus. What does Mary do? She sings. But she, just, she doesn't sing just any old song. She sings a song of protest, a song of justice seeking. She sings a song that prophesies what this baby will do and be and usher in. Mary sings a song for a world in need of healing. She sings a song of defiance. She sings a song of justice. And Mary said, My soul proclaims your greatness, O God, and my spirit rejoices in you, my Savior. For you have looked with favor upon your lowly servant. You have shown strength with your arm. You have scattered the proud in their conceit. You have deposed the mighty from their thrones and raised the lowly to high places. You have filled the hungry with good things while you have sent the rich away empty. That kind of loving, that kind of justice-seeking, earth-shattering love turns our world upside down. On the night before he was crucified, Jesus tells his disciples, a new commandment I give to you that you love one another as I have loved you. God loves us passionately and invites our passionate response. We are to love with that kind of love. We are to live with that kind of love. And our immediate response to this might be to say, no, thank you, this is too hard. This is a path for which I am unprepared. Perhaps we would rather stay where we are than have to find ourselves on a road that leads to Calvary. No wonder we resist the cross and what it means. No wonder we try to tame it and make the cross all shiny and beautiful. We turn it into jewelry. We carve beautiful crosses, sanded smooth and varnished. Yet we continue to be fascinated by the love revealed there. We're drawn to it even as we are repelled by it. God is at the heart of this passion and pain, and where God is, there is life in all its fullness. In Jesus, we see a God who enters fully and completely into our existence. In Jesus, we see a God who stops at nothing to save the lost and the last and the least. And Jesus calls us to follow him, to follow him on that path. It was a path that took him to those on the outside, those shunned by society, those wounded and hurting from a hurtful world. It was a path that took him to those broken in spirit and broken in body, a blind man, a leper, a woman not allowed to be touched by anyone due to a flow of blood. It was a path he took that often put him at odds with the rulers of the day, with the powerful and the self-righteous. But wherever he went, he reached out. He cared for the person behind the illness or circumstance. 
He saw the humanity inside each and every one. And he challenged the authorities when the authorities sought to diminish people or sought to hold power unto itself. Instead, Jesus gave power away. He taught us to turn the other cheek, to love the unlovable, to love even one's enemy. And then it was on the night in which he was betrayed that he took a towel. You thought I was going to say something else, didn't you? You thought I was going to say, on the night of which he was betrayed, he took bread. And that is true too. But if we look just at John's gospel for a moment, we have a very different story included here. We have a new image of what this kingdom is to be that Jesus ushers in. On the night in which he was betrayed, Jesus took a towel and a basin of water. Images of diaconia, of servanthood. It is a story, a calling of towel and water, a story of service, of humble service. And the writer of the Gospel of John wanted us to know that story as well as the story of Holy Communion. What does this towel-taking action, what does this vocation mean for us? That we stand in solidarity with those underfoot, those on the edge, those on the margins of society, those tossed out, looked down upon, judged, thought less of, because that is where Jesus is standing, out there in the midst of them. What does this towel-taking action mean for us? To stand in solidarity, yes. To seek justice, yes. To challenge systemic structures of racism, sexism, and more, yes. But also to speak for the grandeur of old growth forests who need our voices to echo in the chambers of power. Also to call out for the air we breathe, knowing that our carbon output is not loving our neighbor knowing that the effects of our carbon footprints mean that someone's land will disappear from rising seas, that someone's home will get flooded, that droughts will leave millions starving, that fires will ravage vast swaths of land and city. This towel-taking commitment means also that we sing for the seas, whose ice diminishes exponentially where polar bears have less than 100 years to live, where the acidification of the oceans is rapidly escalating, resulting in dying waters. All creation groans. All my relations. We all are interconnected. These are hard texts for us to hear this holy week. For after Jesus washed his disciples' feet, after Jesus put his robe back on, he joins them at table and says, Do you know what I have done to you? It's more than foot washing. It's more than, just, than Jesus doing what a servant would normally have done. It is more than all of that. It is a calling forth of vocation. As I have washed your feet, he said, so you ought to wash one another's feet. Take up my cross and follow me. Sometimes our following of Christ shows itself in a natural outpouring of love and compassion. Sometimes it is something that is brutally hard to do. But many times it is simply that which needs to be learned and practiced over a lifetime of following Christ, of trying to be Christ-like. We need to grow daily in God's way, to love in God's way, to serve in God's way. We need help practicing this so that we become what we practice. And so that's why we gather in church and in community, whether in person or online, to be surrounded by others who also are on this road with us. As we encounter the suffering in our own lives, as we encounter the suffering in other people's lives, we seek to be like Christ to them. These scripture readings for Holy Week remind us that we are not alone in this. God is with us, dying, suffering, hurting, 
starving, weeping throughout the world and for the world. The presence of God is there, is here, in those moments in our lives. To suffer and die is Jesus' life-giving ministry and love to us and to the world. As one writer states, in the cross, God is seen for who God is. In the death of Christ, we find the greatest expression of God's self-giving love for us and for the world. Amen. Please join in singing our next hymn, Light Dawns on a Weary World, number 726. Let us confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need, responding, your mercy is great. Gracious God and Jesus, you came among us as a suffering servant. Give your church humility. 
Redeem your people from pride and the certainty that we always know your will. Heal us and empower us to confess Christ crucified. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In creation, life springs from death. Redeem your creation awaiting resurrection. Restore lost habitats and endangered species. Create new possibilities for areas affected by climate change. Grant relief from natural disasters and nurture new growth. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Jesus was handed over to the powers of this world. In all nations, instruct the powerful that they would not exploit their power, but maintain justice. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. On the cross, Jesus joined all who feel forsaken. Abide with those who are condemned to death. Defend those who are falsely accused. Console and strengthen those who are mocked or bullied. Accompany all who suffer. Grant respite and renewal. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You called followers to tend Jesus' body in death. Sustain hospice workers and funeral directors. Bless all congregations, ministries, at times of death, those who plan and lead funerals, those who prepare meals, and all who offer support in grief. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You inspired the centurion to confess Jesus as your son. We praise you for the faith you have given to people of all places and times. Give us also such faith to trust the promises of baptism and with them to look for the resurrection of the dead. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. I invite you to share a sign of peace with those around you or those on the screen with you today. At this point in our worship services, we usually receive the offering. In the offering, we not only offer our financial gifts for the ministry of the church, but we also make a recommitment, an offering of ourselves for Christ's ministry in the world. Thank you for your faithful support through your financial gifts to the ministry of your local congregation and through the congregation to the ministry in the synod across the ELCIC and in the global world beyond these borders. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Receive God's good word to you this day. The Lord bless you and keep you. 
The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Our sending song is hymn number 334, Tree of Life and Awesome Mystery. 334. that we are going to travel this week is strewn with human stories of betrayal, fear, confusion, love, and loss. In it we will hear echoes of the realities of our own lives and the life of the world God loves. As the palm fronds lie discarded on the ground, we enter this strange reflective silence of Holy Week, where again we will hear the story of God's extravagant love for every person and for all of creation. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God. 